Good morning, everybody. Morning update here on the severe weather threat that will be ongoing across the southern plains this afternoon, Monday, January 2nd. So that will be the focal point for this video. If you are here for the forecast for the rest of the country for the coming days, I will have that video out tonight. But just wanted to give a quick update on today's threat here across the southern plains. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button uh, and share it with all of your friends that you have in this area so they are prepared for the storms. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest weather, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. All right, let's get right into it on this Monday morning. So this low pressure is getting going here off the four corners. It will likely move into the plains uh, as we go into the afternoon. And with that, this strong wind shear will begin to move over this very warm Gulf moisture that has been affected northward into areas of the Southern Plains and Southern Mississippi River Valley uh, later into this afternoon. So looking at radar, we already have some storms actually firing here into East Texas uh, and parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. These storms currently don't pose much of a risk uh, in terms of severe weather just because we still have most of those kinematic ingredients or uh, the wind ingredients needed for tornadoes still back here into West Texas. So we'll have to wait for this afternoon for those ingredients to really start moving over this warm sector for these storms to be able to rotate and potentially produce tornadoes. But nonetheless, still some showers this morning, which could potentially help to keep our instability levels down. So we will hope for that as we get into the afternoon. Let's go ahead and look at the Storm Prediction Center's uh, bullseye area for today. As you can tell, have just about the entire state of Arkansas here into this enhanced risk, as well as northwestern Louisiana, northeastern Texas, and then southeastern Oklahoma. I personally think the area that will be most under the gun for tornadoes today will likely be in this section of that enhanced risk as we go towards sunset. Uh, but anywhere inside this bubble could see severe weather today. All right, so these are the tornado risks that the SPC has outlined today. Uh, again, pretty much follows the same map as the last one we just looked at. But what I will add uh, is we do have shading in this yellow box. It might be hard to tell, but there's uh, a bit of a checkered pattern. And what that means is the Storm Prediction Center is predicting that there could be the possibility for significant tornadoes in that area. So that means uh, EF2 or higher on our EF scale, which goes from EF0 to EF2. F5. So watch out for that in those areas. Uh, wind, uh, excuse me, wind threat will be a problem again through much of the same areas with a 30% chance in this red of seeing uh, damaging winds within a 25 mile radius. All right, um, hail less of a threat today, although still a threat, and that threat will be shifted a little bit further to the west, uh, where there's a little bit. Um, I guess better ingredients for that hail to form. Uh, but let's go ahead and get right into the modeling this morning. Uh, as you can tell so far, model's doing a pretty good job of handling this morning convection going on here into uh, southeastern Texas around the Houston area and up towards Texarkana into Arkansas and Louisiana. So um, this is going into um, the middle morning hours. Once we begin to get into the afternoon hours here, you can see storms begin to really start to fire here into eastern Texas, uh, parts of Arkansas and Louisiana. I don't expect these beginning storms to have as much of a tornado risk as the storms that will fire this evening. Although if these storms can get going, they can poten uh, potentially produce a few tornadoes uh, as well as damaging winds in these areas. So uh, we'll have a bit of a kind of two round kind of day here. This will be that first round that moves through. Uh, and then as we get into the evening hours, that round, as you could tell, was here, will move up into Arkansas, still with a bit of a tornado potential, although what you begin to see here is another line of storms forming. And I think this will be the line that really has the chance of producing a significant tornado uh, as we go into sunset. So this is right around sunset here. You can tell we get some of these discrete cells to form going into parts of eastern Oklahoma, northeastern Texas, uh, and we will have to watch out for some of these to potentially produce uh, strong tornadoes. So as we go further into um, the overnight, those storms will push into Arkansas, 
uh, and bring that threat further there before eventually into the overnight. Uh, this will turn more into a squall line. Uh, we'll have more of a damaging wind threat and QLCS tornado threat, which uh, generally are weaker tornadoes, but also harder to see coming. So uh, going into the overnight, you definitely want to have your NOAA weather radios on so you get any warnings that you might need. All right, so we'll go ahead and look at the significant tornado parameter here with the high-resolution rapid refresh model. Uh, as we get into... Uh, this afternoon, this is about 1 o'clock, you can see the best ingredients for those tornadoes uh, will begin to be moving into uh, pretty much right over the Texarkana region uh, as we get into the afternoon. But what you also see is you get another line here of those ingredients, uh, and that will is what will likely set the stage for those evening time storms that will fire. So uh, as we get into the evening, you can see some of those first storms uh, that move through parts of Arkansas, definitely showing signs of rotation here, uh, and maybe even into extreme, uh, I do mean <laughs> extreme uh, western Mississippi, parts of northern Louisiana, but what you really notice is this blob here of those ingredients here into parts of southeastern Oklahoma, and that's where I really think we'll have that greatest threat for a significant tornado. Uh, but as we go into the overnight, uh, again, those ingredients continue over parts of eastern Oklahoma, uh, but eventually move into Arkansas overnight. Although those ingredients will weaken, they there will still be that threat as we go to more of a squall line mode of storms. All right, looking at the cape with the wind shear uh, over it. Again, I'll try to explain this real quick. Um, so the shading that you see here uh, is cape pretty much. And what that is is thunderstorm fuel is an easy way to try to explain that. Uh, so the brighter the color here, the more fuel there is for the thunderstorms to form. Now what you see over this are the wind barbs. Uh, and what that shows us is directional wind shear as well as, I guess, speed shear um, with these barbs. So what you generally want to see for tornadoes to form are these barbs facing kind of different directions. So you kind of want to see something along these lines for tornadoes to form. You want to see winds coming from different directions um, and that helps produce that wind shear. So whenever you see that overlapping with these brighter colors, that's where you have the best ingredients for tornadoes. All right, so here going into the afternoon, you see that cape really surge northward here and you get some pretty bright numbers here. I mean, once you start getting into the 2000s, that's when things really get dangerous uh, in these areas. As for the shear, again, we don't have a ton of directional shear here early on in the afternoon. Um, but as we move into uh, more of the evening hours, you see that directional shear becomes a lot more favorable. You can see these wind barbs really begin to separate directions and you start to get some of that directional shear here in parts of southeastern Oklahoma, uh, northeastern Texas, and eventually those ingredients will move into Arkansas into the overnight. So. Again, my personal bullseye would be right in here for those uh, significant tornadoes going into tonight. Okay, we'll take a look at one more model and then wrap it up here and I'll let you all get on with your day. So this is the NAM. It's always good to use multiple models whenever we're predicting severe weather. The NAM here, uh, not doing quite as well of a job here of picking up on some of these storms here into Texas, uh, but it does eventually fire those later on as we get into the afternoon here into the Texarkana region. Uh, and those will move into Arkansas as we go closer to sunset, where again, we'll have that isolated tornado threat. But uh, again, this is that, that line that I would be more concerned about as we go into sunset uh, and the five to eight o'clock time frame tonight. And uh, again, as you can see here, some of these could become discrete across southeastern Oklahoma, much like the last model showed. But as we go into the overnight, uh, again, this will eventually turn into more of a linear squall line um, threat uh, where damaging winds will likely take over into Arkansas with that second round of storms. All right, we'll look at the significant tornado parameter here uh, for the NAM model. And again, this just shows what kind of ingredients we have to help form these storms. And actually, did I show this uh, for, yes, I did. Okay, just double checking. Uh, okay, so for the NAM here, again, you see that begin to kind of blossom as we get into this afternoon with um, 
areas getting more favorable for these tornadoes to form. Uh, and as we get further into the afternoon, again, with that second line of storms, I mean, really, once you get into some of these kind of colors, uh, let me bring this map down a little bit so you can actually see the legend at the bottom. Sorry about that. Uh, once you start getting into these colors, though, that's when things really begin to get dangerous here across areas of eastern Oklahoma and Texas. So we'll move this ahead further into the overnight, eventually calming down, but um, still that threat looming in parts of Arkansas and northern Mississippi as we go into that squall line mode. All right, so the same map we just talked about on the last model, I'll show you the NAMS version of that map. So as we get into this afternoon, again, that plume of instability will rise northward uh, through eastern Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, and again, you begin to see some of these wind barbs kind of separate and have a bit of directional shear in area. So uh, I think we've seen a lot of that directional shear kind of in this area. So if you can get that instability here to overlap up there, um, you could potentially see areas right in here having a bit of an elevated risk of those tornadoes. But as we bring this further ahead, Again, you see some of these wind barbs beginning to separate, especially the further north you go, um, those conditions become even better. So if you can get that instability to rise further north, uh, then those areas will definitely be under the gun. So we'll have to watch out for that going into this afternoon. But again, that threat eventually dies down, although still there into sections of Arkansas and Louisiana into the overnight. All right, that is all I have for this morning's discussion video. Uh, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'll keep you updated all day long there on this threat. And as it is evolving, I will show you the latest information that I have. Uh, but if you, like I said earlier, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, share it with your friends so they are up to date with the latest information. And I will see you all this evening.